be open to advice from others. Uh, listen to people, uh, learn from people, um, find people that have done something similar before and try to learn from their experiences. Uh, I, I can't emphasize that enough, you know, how, how much it has helped me, not just having a mentor, but having people around me and, and uh, being able to learn from people, for example, with fundraising. The first time I went out and did that, I got a lot, a tremendous amount of input from a, from a good friend of mine who had done it before, uh, or multiple friends who had done it before, actually. Um, and also with, with you know, scaling operations, it's always great to get input from people that have done that before. With hiring, if you haven't, don't, don't have experience with that, it's tremendously difficult, right, to find the right people to, to work with when you, when you get to that stage. So. Hey everyone, this is Devin Miller here with another episode of The Inventive Journey. I'm your host, Devin Miller, the serial entrepreneur that's grown several startups into seven and eight figure businesses, as well as the founder and CEO of Miller IP Law, where we help startups and small businesses with their patents and trademarks. If you ever need help with yours, just go to strategymeeting.com and we're always here to help. Now, today we have another great guest on the podcast, uh, Rune Haga, and I'm pretty sure I slaughtered the last name, but it's my best attempt. <laughs> Um, but uh, Rune um, was uh, from Norway, probably why I slaughtered his name, although I slaughter lots of people's names, um, and was an athlete in high school, but realized he wasn't going to go pro, so started uh, getting more into um, business and, and that side of things. Um, got into a great program in finance and economics and worked in finance for a bit, and also went to, to business school at Duke and got an MBA um, and then from there moved to San Francisco and started an apparel company, which he later sold. Then started a uh, tech start or then did a tech startup for streaming. Joined another company um, as part of a, the founding team. A um, couple of years uh, later, uh, left the uh, left to start a mentor camp with a with his co-founder. Um, went to, to Bali and got to the MVP. I uh, got some traction from celebrities and got a bit of attention. Expanded the business, raised more money, um, and then as now has I think a ten person team or, or more and, and continuing to grow. So. With that much as a introduction, welcome on the podcast, Rune. Thanks, Devin. Thanks, Devin. That was a, a great summary of, of uh, almost my entire adult professional life. <laughs> <laughs> well, I could, I, you know, taking someone's life and condensing it to 30 seconds is a talent in and of itself. But uh, no, let's uh, unpack that uh, just a bit. So I gave kind of the 30 second version, but uh, tell us a little bit about how your uh, journey got started in uh, Norway as a high school athlete and where you went from there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so I, I, uh, I, I love playing basketball, doing all kinds of sports growing up, but, but basketball was where I excelled and, uh, you know, it's a pretty marginal sport in Norway and, and uh, I, I was good by Norwegian standards, but I realized pretty quickly when we were playing people from, from other places that maybe I should pay a little more attention in school, uh, because the, the, the path from the Norwegian Basketball Association to to <laughs> to, to going pro uh, in in um, in the states is, is, is very long. So anyway, uh, I, uh, I I got a degree in in, in finance and economics uh, as an undergraduate, and then in in grad school as I was doing uh, doing my MBA, I did an exchange semester at, at Duke University. And uh, life sort of happened, uh, and I, I ended up moving out to, to San Francisco instead of uh, taking a stable job back in Norway and, and founding this apparel company. And I didn't know anything about startups at the time. I, didn't I was going to say, about... what, what, uh, you know, so you get a, a, an MBA at Duke, and you go through and get your, your degrees, and you're coming out of school. You know, what made you, first of all, go to San Francisco? So from Norway to Duke to San Francisco, and then what made you land on an apparel company to boot? Kind of what uh, guided those decisions or what was uh, the genesis for those? Yeah, yeah. So, so great, both great questions. Um, so th th there, was, uh, there was a girl involved, of course. <laughs> so <laughs> there always is. <laughs> yeah, she ended up getting a job at, at, at Salesforce and, you know, I, I was kind of adventurous and, and wanted to do something different. And I've been thinking a while about, you know, all, all these ideas I had on of, of bringing uh, something Norwegian to, uh, to the world of apparel. I was always interested in design. 
uh, had this idea of, of doing maybe ski base layers or, or something that Norwegians are known for. Uh, and they realized pretty quickly that, that you know, people are, there aren't that many people that are skiing to begin with. Uh, and uh, we, we sort of quickly became an underwear company because that was sort of the, I guess the close cousin. Uh, and and it, had a, it had a market and, and it had legs uh, and uh, I kept doing it for a while and, and the relationship didn't work out uh, as these things sometimes go, but, but the company was still around. And, and um, so I, I, I stayed in San Francisco for a while. Now you say, okay, follow the girl, love your life. That didn't work out. Spoiler for everybody, it's not always like it is in the movies. Um, but you, then you say, okay, it, did the apparel company for uh, a reasonable period of time, you know, uh, did that. Um, sounds like you get you got a bit of traction and then you decided to sell it. Now, was it the selling it because, hey, it was um, on the downward turn or you got worn out of it or you saw a different opportunity or kind of what made you to sell and decide to chase a different opportunity? Yes. Yeah. So, so the, that that journey was definitely a, a grind. Uh, we we basically didn't raise much capital at all. Uh, more or less bootstrapped. Got a little bit of of, of friends and family uh, and, and investments, but we I didn't know anything about raising capital. Uh, did everything more on a shoestring, pretty much. Uh, barely able to get by for a while, but. Um, th th there was this niche following that really, really uh, was into it. Uh, and uh, I remember I had this one moment where I realized, okay, this, this is interesting because I went into one of these stores that was selling the, the, the underwear. I would go and visit them all the time, right? This big, uh, big thing that, uh, that uh, you know, you, you hear people tell founders all the time. So like, you got to talk to your customers, talk as much to them as, as possible. So I would go and, and, and visit these stores that were selling the products once a month. And uh, this, this British gentleman was, uh, was there, I just happened to be there, you know, this is during the day. And, and, and they, you know, he, he, the store owner said, there's the founder, ask him some questions about this. And uh, I didn't think much of it. The guy bought some underwear. I uh, thought I'd never hear anything about it again. Then the next month I came back and the store owner goes like, well, we're out of all, uh, all your underwear in this particular size. Uh, remember this British guy? I'm like, yeah, I remember him. Well, that was Danny Boyle. He was here in town filming the Steve Jobs movie. I'm like, whoa, yeah, he came back and said, this is the best underwear he's tried in his entire life. Uh, and <laughs> I realized I went on the, on, on the, we had a Shopify, uh, store as well. And I went on it and I realized this guy was just ordering a ton of it. So I'm like, okay, this is kind of cool. This is funny. This is just one customer, uh, but it's a loyal customer and we can find more loyal customers. Right. And we had some of these serendipitous encounters, um, or I had some of these serendipitous encounters that maybe realized, okay, this, this. I have to keep going. I have to keep doing this. There was always something to motivate me. Um, and then it got to a point where, where someone called me out of the blue and said, hey, you know, I've been following your company for a little bit. And uh, would you be interested in selling? And I'm like, yeah, uh, <laughs> sure. Because at the time we were, you know, sales weren't growing tremendously much. But um, yeah, the timing worked out well. And, and yeah. Uh, and, and that makes sense. And, you know, sometimes it is in the timing you're saying, hey, you know, sales are a bit stagnating, you know, it'd be a good time to exit. I have some other opportunities. There are things I've always liked to chase. And so you say, sure, I'd, money's always right. And if you'd make a, a good offer, I'm happy to sell. So you decide to do that. Um, and then I think from there, you know, you, after you sold it, uh, you know, you, you started or I can't remember if you started or joined a, a tech company in the streaming industry, but how did you kind of land going from apparel, you know, doing underwear, you know, underwear and e-commerce to going to streaming? So at this point, I'm about five years in, in, in San Francisco, and, and, uh, and now I have a, a network of of, uh, of people I know, other founders, and, and I got connected to someone because of the, the e-commerce component that I had been doing in, with, with this apparel company. And uh, I, I was connected to another Norwegian founder who was playing around with the idea of doing this, this um, live shopping streaming where, where, where basically people could log on to a live shopping event and you'd have, you know, for example, a nutritional supplement company selling uh, protein powder and you have a fitness influencer talking about 
uh, the benefits of using that particular protein powder, right? On a live stream, and then people could chat. Uh, and it was my e-commerce background and the, the background with, with consumer packaged goods that led me to this conversation with this other founder. So we uh, we decided to do that together. I came on as a as a co-founder, a late co-founder, uh, I suppose, with um, with this other person and, and did that company for a little while. We did raise a little bit of, of venture capital, a little bit of money from professional investors, but I think we were a little early uh, for various reasons. It didn't pan out. Uh, I think geography was also one of them. You know, I was based here, it's based in Norway. Um, and uh, so, so that company, uh, I, I didn't have a successful exit from, but I learned a lot. And then suddenly find my, I find myself in, in, in sort of the consumer tech space. They say, okay, hey, I made the transition to the, you know, made the entrance into the consumer and tech space and uh, maybe it didn't uh, you know work out perfectly or it wasn't as grand of an exit as you know the the first company but it got you into that tech space and got you going and then you know so streaming didn't necessarily work out um but it sounds like you made or continuing to make a good amount of network and then i think you know a couple years uh pass or a period of time passed and you decided to with one of the other people you knew from i think one of the founding teams you started a mentorship camp is that right yeah, so I, I started, uh, I had a short pit stop at a, a uh, another um, startup through, uh, I guess my roommate at the time was doing doing Y Combinator, and he introduced me to the founder of a uh, startup that he, he did Y Combinator with, the Startup Accelerator. And uh, I did that for a little bit uh, as part of the, the early founding team. I wasn't a founder of this company, but I what joined when we were uh i think we were three we were five people and down to three people at some point and then we grew it to uh to to some some 20 25 people and uh i, I did that experience i did that for a little while and then i realized all right i i have the i have the founder's itch uh i have to start something and you know i thought back on you know, a lot of the things I learned, uh, I kept thinking about what we had done at the pre-play, the streaming company, you know, what, what worked, what didn't work. One of the things that did work well was that people wanted to pick these people's brain um, on topics that they knew. So I, I thought about something on, 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 along those lines. And, and um, you know, I, my co-founder, Benjamin, and I, we, we, we met through a mutual friend, went to Bali, and then came up with with uh, I guess the MVP for, for, for mentor cam, this idea that, hey, there, there are so many mentors out there. Most of us agree that having a mentor can be tremendously beneficial, yet very few of us actually have a mentor. So let's, let's make mentorship accessible at scale. Let's see if we can help uh, more people find a mentor that can ultimately help them with whatever goals they have in, in their careers or, or their lives. Um, where, where mentorship can be beneficial. No, and I think that, you know, there's, a, on the one hand, you know, it seems like everybody's a coach or a mentor and that you always hear that's the, where people get into. And yet there is, there is, I think, a, a large need for uh, being able to get that, you know, have the right mentorship or the people to guide you. And in other words, just having someone that tells you how to run your business or give you guidance doesn't make sense. But if you can have the, somebody that's experienced that has the right mentorship and then, and then to have those mentors that know what, how to mentor, all those kind of combined up definitely makes for uh, more successful businesses and uh, thing, or things along the way. Um, and so now as you're starting the mentor sh or mentor camp and kind of getting that up and going, was it something to where it caught, you know, you caught a lot of traction and it was, you know, or took off or was it kind of one where there was a lot of competition and it, or it took a time, a period of time to, um, you know, figure out your place in, amongst the competition or kind of as you're getting that started, how'd it go? Yeah, so 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 mentor cam is, is pretty much exactly a combination of the, of the two words that make up the name, right? It's mentorship and it's done with a camera, right? You're connecting with someone through a camera. So these are the two things that we fundamentally believed in that look, you 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 get access to these mentors and you do it in a way that's low touch on the mentor side. Uh, when we started out, we just did asynchronous videos. We, we, we now actually also launch live calls, but uh, you, you do it in, in, in an easy way to facilitate. And we, 
there weren't really anyone else doing it when we started out about two years ago thinking about the MVP and how we're going to build it. Uh, and we've since gone on to uh, take it to market, launch the beta, we raised some, some, some capital, we did Y Combinator, et cetera. And uh, I, we're now seeing that the space is getting more crowded. Uh, there are more people coming to the table. I think they're coming at it for the most part with a slightly different approach. Um, one of the things that we found that is very, I think that we're doing that is very unique is that we're honing in on this, this personal development, personal growth aspect of advice, right? Because that, that's the thing that will follow you over time. I was lucky enough to have a mentor when, when, when I was in college and we're still in touch uh, without going into how old I am, but it's, it was a while ago. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, the, the, the market is, is, is growing. The, uh, the number of players, uh, naturally as, as you know, this, this opportunity becomes apparent to, to more people is also growing, but I think it's healthy too. It's healthy because it keeps us sharp. No, and I think that, you know, it does seem like it's an area and I think that it ebb and flows and, and you know, it depends on, you know, what's a, a bit of the flavor, but I think that the overall or the long or long or long lasting portion of it um, def definitely is here to stay. And I think that the understanding that mentors, you know, doing it on your own, yes, you can probably figure it out and do it, but you're going to make a lot more mistakes and your likelihood of making it decreases a lot. And if you can find good mentors and people that know what they're doing or been through it before, you can avoid a lot of the mistakes and otherwise um, increase your likelihood of success and, uh, and, and making sure the business is sustainable. So definitely makes sense as, as uh, you guys continue to grow and expand. So well, that brings us a, a bit to, you know, where we're at today. And uh, now one, you know, kind of one follow up question. I always have the two questions at the end, but before we dive into that, those two last two questions as a preemptive to those two questions, kind of now looking a bit into the future, kind of the next steps or the or where things are headed. You know, if you're to look kind of six to 12 months out into the future, where do you see things headed and what's, uh, what's the path for you guys? Yeah, I think for us right now is, is uh, really, figuring out how we can make this accessible to the masses. And what I mean by that is now that we have sort of started to see, see product market fit and, and you know, where, where this is applicable and in terms of like what users uh, are relevant and you know, who are the mentors they're interested in, who are the mentors that are interested in doing it, uh, we, we, we need to scale this and uh, we are, in a really, really good position now, fresh off uh, a recent round of funding uh, to, to really do so. So we're, we're growing the team. We've, we've added a few people uh, on, the, on the operational and, and, and growth side as well. Before that was mostly Benjamin, my co-founder and I, and uh, a handful of, of, of uh, software developers. Um, so that's it's, it's a really, really, really exciting time for us where we're also looking to grow our mentor base and we want to make sure that we have enough mentors to take on the, the demand. So that's also uh, a big focus for us now in the next six months. Awesome. Well, it sounds like it's a definitely an exciting direction to be headed and then <clears throat> definitely a, a lot of opportunity. So now with that is kind of bringing us a, a bit to where you're at today and even looking a bit into the future. Great time to now transition to the last two questions I had asked at the end of each episode. So we'll jump to those now. So the first question I always ask is, Along your journey, what was the worst business decision you ever made? And what did you learn from it? The worst business decision I made was with my first company where I thought I had to develop the entire product from, from scratch. I didn't understand the concept of, of building an MVP, just doing something very, very simple and testing it. I built out a full product line, all kinds of different colors, all kinds of different variations. Uh, and it just took a tremendous amount of time. Um, so I, I think that's something that I encourage everyone to do, just to build the sim most simple version that you, that you can and see if people actually want this stuff. Uh, we, we ended up with a warehouse full of <laughs> boxer briefs that, uh, that took a while to sell. But um, I, I think that would be the one thing that I would advise that and, and perhaps also, you know, not don't, don't try to do everything yourself. You can only do so much, focus on one thing and do that really well. No, and I think that <clears throat> that's a, a great, you know, piece of advice. And I always, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, 
I always uh, joke with our team, you know, I always tell them I hate the terminology MVP because in my mind, it was always, you know, whenever I heard it is, let's put out the crappiest product as quick as we can and see if anybody happens to pay us for it. And so we always use a minimally viable skateboard. In other words, before you build a car, you build a skateboard, you build a bike, and then you build a vehicle and you get progressively more intricate or, or, you know, improve the product to next generation. And so I think that, you know, not necessarily starting with put out a crappy product, but look and see, do you have to build it all from scratch? Can you do something? off the shelf? Is there a simpler product? Is there a way to get it out into the marketplace? So have a good representation of your what your product is or your service or whatever you're providing, but at the same time, not have to invest at all, get all the way to the end and say, well, I hope this works because I have no idea and not having any of that feedback and having all that investment. So I think that's a definitely great piece of advice. Second question oh. I always ask, oh, yeah, second question I always ask is um, along your or if, now if you're talking to somebody that's just getting into a startup or a small business, what would be the one piece of advice you'd give them? Uh, be uh, be open to advice from others. Uh, listen to people. Uh, learn from people. Um, find people that have done something similar before and try to learn from their experiences. Uh, I, I can't emphasize that enough, you know, how, how much it has helped me, not just having a mentor, but having people around me and, and uh, being able to learn from people, for example, with fundraising. The first time I went out and did that, I got a lot, a tremendous amount of input from a, from a good friend of mine who had done it before, uh, or multiple friends who had done it before, actually. Um, and also with, with, you know, scaling operations it's always great to get input from people that have done that before with hiring if you haven't don't, don't have experience with that it's tremendously difficult right to find the right people to to work with when you when you get to that stage so i, I think that's the one piece of advice that i would give is just you know don't don't be shy about finding uh or asking people around you for for help no, and I think that that's a great, you know, it, it, it sounds simple and it sounds like, oh, of course, you know, ask people for help. And yet a lot of times I think you get into a, a small business or startup and you figure one, you know, I got to figure this out on my own or I got to prove people I can do it or two people want to invest their time or their effort or, you know, I can't afford it or any number of things and you make up excuses. And yet most of the time when you get into it and you actually ask for people that for that help, most time people are pretty willing to give it to you and they're wanting to help you along their way and they're wanting to see other people succeed and make those connections and all those things. And so I think it's definitely a great, you know, thing for, to ask for that help and also to get it because I think it can make it, uh, again, have a big impact on that. Well, with that, if people are wanting to reach out to you, they're wanting to find out more, they're wanting to be a customer, they're wanting to be a client, they're wanting to be an investor, they're wanting to be an employee, they're wanting to be your next best friend, any or all of the above, what's the best way to reach out, contact you, or find out more? Well, coincidentally, there, there is this, this platform called MentorCam. So you can go to mentor.cam slash Rune Hauge, R-U-N-E-H-A-U-G-E. -E. You can find me there. Uh, and uh, you can also hit me up on LinkedIn if, if, you, uh, if you prefer <laughs> a, a different approach. But those are probably the best ways to, to reach me. All right. Well, I definitely encourage uh, everybody to, to reach out, whether it's on LinkedIn, whether it's via the website, find out more, support them. And if you're looking to, to get involved with mentorship, definitely a, a great place to, to, to connect. Well, thank you again for coming on the podcast, Rune. It's been a fun. It's been a pleasure. Now, for all of you that are listeners, if you have uh, your own journey to tell and you'd like to be guests on the podcast, we'd love to have you. Just go to inventiveguest.com and apply to be on the show. A couple more things. Uh, make sure to listen or click or subscribe. Make sure to share, make sure to leave us a review because we want to make sure that everybody finds out about all these awesome episodes and help all the entrepreneurs and startups along their way to success. And with that, if you ever need help with your patents, trademarks, or anything else with your business, feel free to go to strategymeeting.com, grab some time with me to chat, and I'm always here to help. Thank you again, Rune, for coming on the podcast and uh, wish the next leg of your journey even better than the last. Thanks, Devin. Thanks for having me. It was great.